Hey family, today I am coming with you all to show you all how I grew my hair so long, so fast, and I've gotten the request for this video so many times, so I'm finally coming to start of the year with this video, so maybe at the end of the year we'll see where we're at then. Um, but this is where I'm at now, and just to give you all a little background history, um, I have been natural for two years. I transitioned for a year and then I chopped all my perm hair off December of 2016 or 2015. December of 2015. So I have been natural for two whole years now. I never thought I would be at this point where I'm saying I've been natural for two years. That's like such a milestone for some people. So I'm finally here and I'm gonna show you all what did I do along the way to maintain my length and also to get to where I am now with my current length. So I hope you all enjoy this video, but also I had a giveaway that was going on in my last video and I am announcing the winner on today's video. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Like, come on, join the family. We are hashtag the family here on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you too can become part of the family. All right, so let's get to the next part of this video where most of you are here for, and it's how I grew my natural hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and let you guys see what it looks like all the way around. And y'all, my hair has grown so much. Like, I'll try to insert some photos over here of, like, my journey. Like, when I first got it blown out to my second time getting it blown out, y'all, my hair has grown so much. Especially the front of my hair is now, like, even with the, my, my face. So I'm hoping for down here by the end of this year. That would be great. I wrote all my tips down just so I don't forget anything because I didn't want to forget anything for this video. My first tip, number one would be to know your hair. And when I say know your hair, what I mean is know your porosity, know your density, know what products your hair likes, what products your hair hates. That's very important because if you don't know your porosity or density, you could be using products that have, are nowhere close to what your hair needs. And your hair may not receive the natural nourishment and moisturizing that it actually calls for, which in turn will cause for breakage and dryness. So it's really important to find out your hair. In the beginning of your natural hair journey, it'll be really tough to find out your, like what your hair is because your hair is constantly changing so much. Um, I'll give you an example. So when I first became natural, my hair loves coconut oil. I loved it. But then as I was like getting to really know my hair, my, I was like, wow, like my hair is getting dry whenever I use coconut oil. So I actually like um, solidified it down to realizing that coconut oil was the reason why my hair was starting to become dry. So now I don't use coconut oil on my hair at all and even with products that have a high um, part of coconut oil in it, my hair doesn't really like it, it actually dries it out. So it's all about knowing your hair. So I know that I have high density, low porosity hair, very thick, very curly. So I'm able to see which products based off of that and my hair doesn't take water that like if I put it on it takes a really long time to dry. So that's how I know I'm low porosity. If you don't know your porosity levels, look at this chart right here and this chart will tell you what your porosity level is. And if you don't know your density level, then you just look at your hair. Density means how dense your hair is. So how many strands do you have on your hair? Um, how full is your hair? So my hair is extremely full, extremely thick, so I know that I have high density hair. If you have like maybe like sporadic, like your hair is sporadical and I'll go up here, and if you have like um, it looks really thin. Your hair may not be thin, you may just have low, low density hair. So different people have different types of hair. So you wouldn't really use heavier products, whereas I would use heavier products because my hair would call for it for that moisture. So number two will be to properly cleanse your hair. So 
Properly cleanse your hair. You're probably like, oh, what do you mean by that? Okay, so whenever I say properly cleanse your hair, um, some people cold wash, some people shampoo. Me personally, I do both. However, I also know that maybe three times out of the month, I will have to use a shampoo and maybe one time a cold wash. You can also shampoo your hair and not cold wash at all if you use the correct shampoo. Um, some people like using the clarifying shampoo, but I wouldn't say to use that every week because your hair actually needs those nutrients at the scalp in order to stay moisturized. So you don't want to remove your nutrients every single week. You want to keep some of that in your head so that your hair and your scalp can, can stay moisturized. Make sure that you are doing what's best. You don't want to overly co-wash and have buildup, but you also don't want to overly clarify and shampoo and have a dry scalp. Because if you have a buildup, then your, your strands can't breathe and grow out of your hair. And if you have dry hair, then it's gonna break off and if you have a dry scalp then it's gonna break off so just make sure that you know your hair step three which is my favorite and my most vital and important step which would be to deep condition deep conditioning is so essential for our hair because it locks in that moisture it, it allows our hair to retain moisture it allows our hair's follicles to breathe and to accept whatever we're giving it and whenever I deep condition I like to deep condition with heat four times a month and if I'm like washing my hair maybe two times a week I still deep condition but I just don't use heat maybe so I like to use heat at least four times every month because that the heat really allows the products to melt into our hair and it really does add the shine and the moisture that our hair needs. Not every deep conditioner works for your hair. Like I know plain deep conditioners that are just not compatible with my type of hair so I stay away from those. But I'm not saying don't try new products but if a product doesn't work for you then don't try to make it work. Um, because deep conditioning is very vital so you want to make sure that the one you use is hitting all the bases that you need. And make sure to use heat at least once every week. Um, so I apply my all my products in the shower. I put on either my thermal hot head or I may just put on a um, grocery bag or a plastic cap and get under my hooded dryer. If you want long hair, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the time because it is, it's like a plant. You have to water it in order for it to grow. You have to give it its nutrients. So deep conditioning our hair with products that are made with the first ingredient of water and also very good ingredients that that go well along with our hair by knowing your hair that is a key way to maintain your length your moisture your growth everything that has to do with your hair so make sure you do not neglect that step all right so step four so step four would be to oil your scalp at least once to twice a week um, as far as what oils I like to use, I like to use oils that have olive oil in them because olive oil is really good for my hair and also castor oil. So I like to use the main choice oil and also curls oil is really good. And as far as my scalp, I like to use the main choice growth oil, which is this one right here. And it comes in like a four ounce bottle. And I like to just apply this to my scalp once to twice a week and massage it on into my strands and to my scalp because that actually promotes growth so you want to make sure you take care of your roots and your scalp properly because that's where your hair grows from another oil that I like for my hair is the blueberry bliss reparative hair oil which is also four ounces and I like this oil so much it smells so good it has blueberry extract in it and a lot of other organic oils and oils that are really good for thick hair this is a thick oil as well so I tend to lean towards thicker oils for my hair and also for my scalp because that is actually what helps me the most oil is not going to moisturize your hair it's going to seal in moisture so that's why it's good to have that base of moisture before you put that oil on top to lock in that moisture so step five would be I have lipstick on my hands. Step five would be to get regular trims. Oh my God, y'all. This is a step that I myself have problems with because I never like trimming my hair. But you also have to think about it this way. If you don't trim your hair, then you're going to have even worse effects. So you might as well go ahead and get that trim three to four times a year. Even though the hair grows from the, from the scalp, it breaks off at the tips. So it's very important to, 
take care of those tips y'all make sure you're getting your trims three to four times a year because if you don't your hair starts to split up the shaft and then that is really bad and i'll kind of insert what it looks like when it splits up the shaft and what type of split ends there are so there's many types of split ends and your hair can split up the shaft which is not good at all you want to avoid that as much as possible and it's good to do that by actually trimming your hair and also maybe using something on your ends to help with that so make sure that you implement that into your regimen so as far as who does your trims so I do my trims because I know what I'm looking for I can feel it I know where to cut if you don't feel comfortable doing your trims I would say go to someone who can do hair however make sure that you know who's doing your hair don't let anyone trim your hair just because they say they can do it. Make sure that they prove it to you, that you look at their past work, you look at their history, you look at their clients. If they have clients whose hair has been the same for the same length for about two years and they're trying to grow their hair, don't go to them because clearly something's not working. So you want a good people to actually have growth and to actually have people who experience growth from going to them. So make sure you know who you're going to. If you're realizing or if you don't know when is right to trim your hair, for me, when I, I style my hair like once a week. So whenever I'm styling, I can see if my ends are straggly or I can see if they just look dry or whenever I finish my style, my hair is dry. If my ends are more puffy than the rest of my hair, that means that your ends need to go and need to be trimmed. Also, if you just look at your ends and if you see a split like this, that's a split end. So you want to get rid of that. And then you can also feel whenever your ends are very dry or very damaged or single strand knots, you can feel all of that as well. So that's when you want to go ahead and trip that, trim that right on off. Tip six. So for tip six, I would say to make sure that you get protective styles if a protective style is for you. I like protective styling. It's not for everyone though. And whenever you get these styles, get the ones that prevent breakage and are low maintenance. Um, I do box braids on myself. I do um, I do two flat twists to the back. I do multiple flat twists. I do three strand. Um, sometimes I do like a little get braids in my hair. I always, or even mini twists. Mini twists is a great protective style because it really does lock in moisture. I also add a picture of when I had my mini twists in my head and my hair was so moisturized y'all for about two whole weeks. And it also helped with my ends because it was low maintenance. Um, also with knowing who does your hair, please don't go to people who don't know how to do hair. Look at how they have done hair in the past. If someone is doing something too tight or braids too tight, let them know because it's your hair, not theirs. You're the one who works so hard to maintain it, not them. So you have that right to either get up out that chair or let them know and they can change it. But just don't sit in a chair and let someone do something to your hair because you don't want to tell them that they're not doing it right. So tip seven. So tip seven would be to get a daily biotin intake. So with biotin, if you don't know what biotin is, it is a vitamin that helps with growth in the nails, the hair, and the skin. So with biotin intake, you can get biotin from vitamins. That's where I get mine from. I take normal biotin vitamins, 10,000 MCGs, one every day with a meal preferably. I've even taken vitamins from different natural hair brands. However, I've come to realize that the main the main ingredient in those vitamins is biotin. There's other things, of course, that actually help with your hair, but as long as you're getting biotin on a daily basis, that's what you really want to intake in order to maintain that strength of your hair, your skin, and your nails. I've even tried like the Indian hair method, I put upside down, the curly hair method, the all type of stuff I've tried, but I find that just sticking to normal biotin intake is what works best for me. And there's also some um, oils that have biotin in it. I think that this oil does actually. Yes, so this oil says infused with biotin and vitamin C and D. So this oil has biotin in it as well, which helps with the strength of your strands that grow out of your hair by putting that on your scalp. So tip eight would be, I kind of touched on this earlier, don't allow anyone, just anyone to style your hair or to be in your head. Make sure that they have credentials 
And sometimes, okay, I'll take that back. They don't have to really have credentials as long as they know what they're doing. Like, I know how to do hair, but I don't have credentials. But I know what, you know, certain types of hair need. I know what people, like, if I actually can see your hair or feel your hair, I would know. Now, over, if you ask me a question, like, over Instagram, then I may not be able to answer that because I'm not actually there to see your hair. I can only tell you what works for me. But I have plenty of friends that whose hair I have done in the past, and I make sure that based on their hair, this is what the products I'm going to use. It may not be the exact same ones as me, but I do make sure to use what works for them. So tip nine, my last and final tip. So tip nine would be to track your progress. So make sure to track your progress because that's how you really get to see if your hair is growing. Like I inserted earlier in the video, the progress of my hair, I really have seen so much growth in my hair and that's how I know that the regimen that I am sticking to it actually works for me. Just to let you know what my regimen is, I deep condition weekly, I shampoo or co-wash weekly and then I go in with my styling and I do, I suddenly do wash and goes during the winter because that really is not good for my hair to be exposed so much while it's winter time, especially not while it's wet. So I try to do more of braid outs and twist outs and even flat twist styles so I try to stick to those styles even many twists something that basically locks in the moisture and I'm just saying that's for me personally because whenever I do a wash and go my hair can seem to be a little bit more drier than if I do a braid out or main twist or something like that I do challenge you to get a regimen for 2018 hashtag regimen 2018 get you a regimen you're gonna stick to because your hair flourishes and is more nourished when it knows its regimen so I hope these tips really did help you all. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please comment below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it. And also please subscribe to my channel and become part of the family because we here. We all here. We all are here, okay? So make sure that you are here as well. And thank you all so much. I have so much in store for 2018 and I have so many more videos to come. So thank you all for tuning in. Mwah.